Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome to New Orleans, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, and this is Veeam on 2017. My name is Dave Vellante, and with my co-host, Stuart Miniman. Stu, it's always a pleasure to be working with you. Great to be here with you, Dave. Uh, second time I think we've done theCUBE in New Orleans. My first time I've been at a conference here in over a decade. It's hard to believe, a lot's changed. Been back since Katrina a couple of times, but uh, first time we're here, I'm excited. A lot of people we know here, about 3,000 people in attendance. Very international uh, audience, uh, just like Veeam's customers. Well, I think it's, yeah, it's a good, it's a good venue for, for Veeam on. Veeam is a company, for those of you who don't know, $600 million in bookings last year, growing at almost 30% a year, penetrating the, the Fortune 500 very deeply, about 70% of the Fortune 500 purchases some products and services from Veeam. Uh, Global 2000, the penetration is a little bit lower, around 50%, uh, but this is a company that has on a, been on a meteoric rise. We saw today that one of the most telling slides from a business standpoint that I saw was uh, that Peter McKay put up a slide showing companies that have ascended to 800 million, which is where Veeam is on the track to, to get to very shortly. We're talking about Workday, Salesforce, ServiceNow, the leaders in the software business, and here's this infrastructure company that started in really in VMware Backup, very focused on VMware Backup, and now becoming the availability platform for you know, what they're calling the always-on digital enterprise. Now let's talk about that for a second. The strategy is quite interesting, Stu. I mean, it, you know, you think about this for a second, you say, okay, well everybody's going to do backup in the cloud. Everybody's going to AWS, they're going to back up on AWS. But the use cases that are emerging for Veeam are actually quite substantial. Let's talk about them. One is on-prem. So if you can have, you know, the best availability solution on-prem, obviously that's of interest to you. And that's really what Veeam has done historically with VMware in particular, but now growing out. Then there's the, the use case of, well, I have my data in the cloud, but I kind of don't think it's, I trust the cloud so much. I'd like to have you know, some security, and maybe I'd like to back up from the cloud on-prem. There's another UK use case, which is cloud to cloud. I want to go from AWS to Azure. And that's a use case that's emerging within this infrastructure. So uh, you've really got a diverse set of use cases that are emerging, and this company's trying to position as the strategic partner for always on availability for the digital enterprise. Powerful messaging, but simple. Yeah, and Dave, I want to add on that a little bit. If you follow the data, where do people have their data? As you said, right, on-premises, where Veeam started, VMware specific, expanded out to Hyper-V, uh, you know, great adoption. Uh, it, one of the, you know, a lot of things I want to dig into this week. One of them, they've got, uh, what was it, 231,000 customers last year. How many of those pay? How many are free? But you know, look at VMware has 500,000 customers worldwide. You know, that's a pretty good uh, penetration uh, into those environments. Uh, but uh, SaaS applications, where you know, I have lots of data there, how do I back it up? How do I pull that into all of my environments? Uh, third piece, public cloud as you said. How do I manage all of those environments when I've got a hybrid or multi-cloud? Uh, we heard some announcements today, something I know we're going to be digging into a lot this week. Uh, but you know, how do all those pieces go together? Uh, we, we heard like uh, with VMware, there's the VAIO integration. Well, if I'm doing that and I'm doing Amazon, how do those play together? How do things like VMware support in AWS work for a company like Veeam? Uh, you know, I was really impressed. Uh, we went to the media session this morning. Some of it's still embargoed, but really broad partnerships that Veeam has built. Had VMware and Cisco on as some of the big elite uh, people on, on stage, the expo is uh, you know, right off to the side where we are uh, here at the show, Dave. Lots of partners, lots of big companies, many legacy companies, but also lots of you know, new, interesting companies that, that are helping to, move, to, to push uh, to kind of the cloud native, uh, you know, multi-hybrid cloud world that we live in today. Yeah, so again, the ascendancy of Veeam really came about as a focused company on VMware backup. Now, now if you think about VMware in the early days, what was happening is you were consolidating physical servers, so you were taking underutilized physical servers and then consolidating them and getting much more efficiency out of your IT. And there was an agility aspect as well, there's certainly availability components, but the, the key challenge, one key challenge that customers had when they consolidated all those services is that yes, the servers were underutilized, but the one application that wasn't underutilized was, was backup, that you used a lot of your server to do a backup in a big stream of data. And so, 
a, a lot of customers had to re-architect their backup, they had to simplify their backup, and that's really where Veeam came in. And that, then you started to see this company explode. And now you're hearing, you know, going from, from backup to, to, to replication, we heard that sort of second journey, there was a lot of that going on, but now it's really the center of, of availability, the availability console, and I think you nailed it when you talked about the ecosystem. They got 45,000 partners. Um, that's a tremendous number, so obviously the channel is very important, we're going to be unpacking that this week. The business driver is to shrink RPO, recovery point objective, that is the amount of data that you can afford to lose, and RTO, recovery time objective, the speed at which you can get your applications back up and running. Those are really the two metrics that translate into business terms, like I don't want to lose data, I don't want to be down. Uh, and that's a challenge that every backup software company, and every company generally has to face. Yeah, Dave, absolutely. And that was highlighted in one of the announcements that, that V made this morning, their, their continuous data protection, or CDP announcement, uh, not using snapshots, it really allows them to you know, dial down uh, to, you know, rather than a 15 minute uh, you know, you know, RPO, it's down to 15 seconds. Um, but is that something now that's going to compete against some of what many of their partners have? So there is that give and take. There's a large TAM that Veeam has, but as they expand, just as we every software company, uh, you've got that ecosystem. What products do you put out there uh, that might compete against some of the other offerings that you have there? Um, good energetic group, partners I, I know are excited. Uh, you know, multi-year they've been doing this show. Uh, you know, real good energy and uh, you know, lots of good announcements. Sometimes you go to the shows and it's like, oh okay, uh, you know, couple of yawn things up on stage, but crowd was really excited for some of the demos. A lot of good pieces uh, in that we're going to have you know, full slate of guests to be able to dig into for, yeah, for just, this week. Just to geek out on one of those points for a minute. So you were talking about is the, the CDP, continuous data, data protection. The granularity historically of that has been 15 minutes using snapshots. Snapshots are great. Even though snapshots are space efficient, they're still less efficient than doing things directly to the kernel, the, through deep integration. Now, now VAIO, it's the, uh, the, the vSphere API for IO, um, IO, come on, help me. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, it's sort of these geeky things that VMware, they publish these, these specs. And you got to get the SDK, uh, so I'm interested how long have they had the SDK. Yeah, and, and by the way, I, Dave, I, I checked the, there's a compatibility guide for VMware, and there's about you know, 10 partners that are listed on there, and Veeam isn't there yet, probably because they just announced you know, uh, you know, version 10 here of Veeam Availability Suite that supports that, so yeah. you know, one of the first questions is going to be, all right, so when's this fully GA, so when's these it are supported? Key, these are key things, it's, it's vSphere a, a API for IO filtering, by the yeah. way. Okay, <laughs> so these are key things that partners have to get a hold of through the SDK. Now, you know, it's interesting, right? Because VMware is owned by, used to be owned by EMC, now it's owned by Dell. Do Dell and EMC have the inside track on this stuff? Does VMware sub-optimize its business uh, and its ecosystem to stack the deck for Dell EMC? Historically, no. Um, but you know, this is something that we have to watch. So we're going to be asking some of those tough questions on the on the cube today. Veeam, you know, David Floyer had a great quote in a Silicon Angle article. He said, "Look, v uh, VMware would be better off, in my opinion, you know, integrating with Veeam and giving Veeam a piece of that market because it'll serve customers better and ultimately will lower costs, which is what the software company VMware in this case." should be doing. So that's, that was an interesting perspective from, from Florida. But we're going to be going wall-to-wall -wall coverage, two days to, last point. Yeah, so, so, so Dave, I've uh, got a question for you actually. There's been some management chain, Peter McKay is now co-CEO. Right. There are rumors of acquisition, they're now you know, over 600 million, going towards a billion dollars. You know, when do they IPO, or does one of the big players out there uh, decide to grab them because They've got some you know, clear IP, they've got a you know, loyal and excited customer base. Uh, there's many companies that would love to have that in the portfolio. Well, the company's cash flow positive since yeah. the early days. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't happen, cash flow no, positive. No outside uh, money taken in, so I, you know, there were rumors that they would go for a billion dollars. The company's worth much more than a billion dollars right now. So I mean, I guess that's the dilemma for, for <laughs> Veeam, you know, a nice problem to have. But if you look at software, you know, even revenue multiples and just do the simple back of the napkin math, a, a billion dollars in my opinion wouldn't get it done. So that's why that deal, one of the reasons probably why it never happened. Okay, this is theCUBE, we're live from, from New Orleans, Veeam on 2017, as I say, wall to wall coverage for two days. We got three shows going on this week. We got SAP Sapphire, we got Informatica, and Stu and I are here at Veeam on. Keep right there everybody, we'll be back with our next guest right after this short break.